Hey guys, I got another Saiga video. And I've owned several Saigas in my lifetime. I can't quantify exactly how many, but it's always interesting to kind of see the differences in them. And today, I learned something new and I'm going to share it with you. So if we look at these two Saigas, the one in front of you is a mutt. And um, it's a... Uh, it's in the adolescent phases. It doesn't really know what it wants to be. So, um, yeah, you know, like those kids that dye their hair half blonde and half something else. You know, they're just in a transitional phase. All right. Well, anyways, um, the one on top has uh, Arsenal furniture. Looks kind of cool. Has a um, some type of rail that's held uh, using the the rear sight block, and then it goes over the top cover and it gets screwed in. This, honestly, is a piece of shit. I don't know why this is on here, but the previous owner had that on here, and then um, I was having uh, some difficulties taking it off, and I just left it there. And I'm gonna be selling this rifle. But um, the difference is, I don't know if you can tell or not, oh yeah, and by the way, this is the Russian American Armory one, and I've seen several variants of these. I believe this one would have been in Russian American Armory one. It would have said that stamping would have been back here, but then it's been scraped out and it says RWC, uh, I think on the other side. Well, anyways, the dimples. Look at that. The dimples. This one doesn't have dimples. I haven't, I just noticed that and I haven't seen it in uh, other uh, Sega rifles. One time I've had a Russian American Armory rifle with this stamp on this side where this would have been. And it w this one is also made in 07, looking at um, the markings. And also, uh, these markings are on the other side. Let me show you that right now. And this one was a regular hunting rifle. And I believe this one was also, I mean, this one was a factory conversion because you could tell by the metal trigger guard and usually most con home conversions are made with this trigger group. It's like either billet or maybe some type of plastic polymer. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's one of the two plastic polymer uh, trigger guards. And honestly, this is a piece of shit. Um, if you don't really know much about Sega's in the conversion process of it, um, basically, once you rip all that stuff out, this is just bolted on. So there's a screw somewhere here, here, and here, or maybe it's just the two. There's a two or three screws, and this handguard is held in place by something that goes over here and then comes down. So basically, you're kind of limited to what type of handguards you can use or no, not, not a handguard, the pistol grips that you can use. So the factory ones usually don't fit because the threads are too long. So it's going to be kind of goofy or you're going to have to cut off some of the threads for it to fit. So just keep that in mind. But anything with a, basically a door that opens up or has like a hollow cavity and you can put a small screw in here, that one would work. Because basically this, this screw would bottom out whereas the other AK-1s, there's like a piece of metal that is held in place and basically the screw will keep going in and it will go through the um, the other side and anyway what I was going to show you was um, the marking was on this side and also these holes have not been fit in so this was very much a home conversion action still pretty smooth and um, the the magazine retaining latch needed to be filed down and also I'm not sure if I got to the story but okay so the other Russian American armory rifle that I had actually even had a military triangle ishmash marking right here and this one just has um, that marking and another this one might not be found in the other ones but i've seen a lot of these markings right here let's look at that 
oh, it's like a circle with like some kind of N looking character on it. Those are pretty common, but that triangle marking rifle that I had, wow. That one was a really nice rifle. I don't recall if it was half factory, half home conversion or not, but um, it did not have this. It was a metal trigger guard. Everything about the fit and finish on that rifle was really nice, and I was like a second or third owner on that one, but I foolishly sold it, and if I were to do it again, I would have kept it. And I actually bought this rifle from the guy that I sold that rifle to, and he sold this to me really cheap. Uh, so cheap that I could not refuse his offer, but I didn't know The quality of this item until I got it I mean I got it at a price where I know I'll liquidate it and at least get my money back if not more but um, Yeah, I mean this rifles, okay, but um, Like the the lack of the some of the features. I mean it's a little upsetting but that military marking, I was actually going to turn this into like a SGO. I would have changed out the gas block and the front sight block for that one because, you know, you don't really come by a lot of those rifles. Uh, but 07, what's this guy? Um, this one's an 09. Can you all even see that? I can barely see that. Is it even working? 09. I don't know I don't even know if you could see that but 09 and also most of the factory conversions that I've seen have this cutout right here whether it works I'm not sure but um, that's just a little FYI if you wanted to see that so there's so many different Saigas that I've had these are two very different ones and I still miss that other one with the military marking, Russian American Armory. Uh, it, it seems super rare. And most people aren't in the Saiga collecting market. But if you were an AK collector and if you were in the market, that one would definitely be the one to own. I don't know what type of premium it would bring because it's really hard to quantify it because, you know, a Van Gogh painting might be worth millions of dollars. But it's only worth millions of dollars if other people are willing to pay or if anybody's willing to pay it that, that much for it. Um, I even made that gentleman a higher offer than what I paid him for it or a trade plus cash but I mean he did not want to take anything that I've offered and I've offered him some pretty sweet deals too and pretty good factory uh, sake as well I was going to trade him this guy um, which this is also a very good one this is a factory conversion uh, I would say just as smooth as the other one that I've had, and I and that one had like a gunsmith work on it, so that's probably why it was a lot smoother and everything, but this one, straight from the factory, was pretty nice, and that's that story. And if you wanted to know something else about Saigas and conversions, since we're on, on my page, um, if you will notice here, it's kind of shiny because I just spray painted it black, but anyways, this is the original Saiga gas tube, if you haven't watched my other video. Instead of getting one of these, which is the um, a top handguard retainer, you don't need this guy per se unless you want a top handguard. So what you could do is take your or original Saiga gas, uh, gas tube, and there's a sheet of metal that's actually welded in the, uh, welded here and on the back. And if you can slowly work it off, like kind of take like a little uh, pick or like a flathead and kind of work it out, they will pop off. You take that little shield off and then you can fit this guy onto it. And this is the Midwest Industries uh, handguards. You can fit it onto there without buying another gas tube. I mean, um, if you were like me and originally bought it and just tried to kind of put it on there, it's not going to work. Or some I've seen people say that it fits without any modifications and I don't know how they did that I think they were lying or maybe they didn't do it themselves. I don't know but um, uh, Basically this gas tube doesn't really make contact with the top part, which is kind of cool. So it's kind of uh, Floating out there held in place with another Bracketed piece of metal. So this is a very good option without trying to pay what $40 for a gas tube plus the, the furniture. So 
let's say 40 for the gas tube and maybe uh, 40 to 60 for the hand guards is going to be about $100 where you could maybe pick up one of these hand guards for 80 on eBay to 120 new. So, you know, it really depends on what your preferences are. Do you want hand guards like this? Or do you want something like that? You know, just preferences. And this hand guard I bought from eBay, five bucks. It's, uh, pretty solid. Could be um, what like airsoft quality or whatever, but it does its job. It's not breaking the bank. I'm not paying thirty bucks for it. I paid five, and if it breaks, I'm not going to be too mad about it. It was five dollars. I might get another one, but it, but it's very hard, very durable. I mean, if it's just something to grab onto, and if it's five dollars, hey, it was worth it. Maybe could have been ten. It's five to ten. I don't know. Things in China are dirt cheap. Um, yeah, so we are gonna get this guy dressed up with something different. I had a Tapco folder. Those are not that great. I was gonna say something else. They're not that great. Even fixed when you hold it up to your uh, shoulder, it doesn't um, doesn't stay still. It kind of has some wobble to it. So uh, I do not recommend those. And this grip, um, just a standard style AK grip, I may have talked about a, a different Bakelite that I had before in one of my other videos, or maybe I never published it yet. But uh, the, if I were to ever have a Bakelite grip, the Polish ones are the way to go. Or maybe the Romanian ones too, that are made of Bakelite instead of plastic like this. And, and Bakelite is a type of plastic that has a certain look to it. So you can match up East German mags or the Izzy's or whatnot, or the Izzy's uh, short term for Ismash. So uh, anyways, I appreciate you watching this short comparison, wasn't that short, but it was short enough, uh, of the Sega rifles. And if I come across another interesting Sega, I will put it up because I'm not really sure if anybody else put these videos up. And um, basically what I'm here to do is put up videos to share information with you all uh, I know I'm not going to get a million views like everybody else blowing up stuff, but I would like to just contribute some knowledge to you guys out there that are AK enthusiasts or looking to buy a gun and just want some extra knowledge. And hopefully you'll be able to find my videos because most of my videos are kind of niche and they're somewhat, you know, uncommon. I mean, if you do like a ton of research, I'm sure you'll find the same information that I have, maybe or maybe not. But, you know, I try to give out information that other people don't give you. So um, that's what I'm here to do, to educate. I'm not a professional, and I don't claim to be. i just a regular guy on the market, likes guns, and likes to compare things. And if I learn something new, I'll share it with you guys, too. Well, you enjoy your evening and try to stay safe. Thank you.